Hello there tank mates and all respected hobbyists. My name is Rimas and this is Full Tank Channel. Welcome. In this episode I would like to talk about a very important topic and it is food. What do we feed our fish? Live, frozen or dry food? How much do we give at a time? How often do we feed? What effect does food have on our fish? Lots of questions, so let's get started. All right, I'm pretty sure you all have more than a few jars of different foods in your cabinets. How do you choose your food? What criteria are the most important when you're choosing one or another product? Ingredients, nutrition properties, price or durability? By the way, pet stores often offer so-called volume discounts. For example, you buy an XXL size box for L package price. At first sight, that's great, saving is not a bad thing at all. But there is at least one problem behind this temptation. Attention. Almost all the food must be used within a month after opening. Can you do that? At the same time, imagine what will happen to the food after a month. Will it not lose its properties? Will it not spoil and still be safe? Maybe, maybe not. Think about it, because it may happen that, seduced by discounts, you might find yourself surrounded by expired packages. That is how discounts turn into losses, and more is not necessarily better. Uh, I have to take care about smallest, so I have this shaker uh, with a small food, small fracture food. It's for the neon tetras, rosboris, luminosus and so on and special dish for mommy babies again it has a spiral line of legs they are really tiny really really tiny the second topic is what kind of food should we use the simple answer is whatever works best for your fish. It depends on the nature, species and breed. For example, you cannot feed puffer with spirulina and cichlids need plant-based food. A guppy or neon tetra will not eat silver dollar food because they are just too small. This is all about different nature of a fish that everybody should learn. What about fish diet? This may seem complicated, but just imagine what fish eat in their natural environment and things will become much clearer. The answer is variety. Speaking about variety, I already gave them uh, some blood worms, uh, but usually I give a little pinch of daily food, some special food for cichlids, just a little pinch of that. To satisfy different needs. This daily granulate, the fracture, as you can see it's quite small so smaller fish can eat it and 
this special sickle thing is a little, a little bigger. But anyway, little bigger guys will eat it anyway. Indonesia is very rare to find an individual that eats only plant foods or is exclusively carnivore or eats only certain foods. It happens, of course, but it is rare. In nature, animals usually eat what they can find. A little of this, a little of that. One day a beetle or a fly fell into water. Great, let's grab it. The next time fish managed to skim the algae or pinch a leaf, etc, etc. These are the principles I follow when I'm feeding my fish and that works. One day I give frozen bloodworms, the next day dry pallets, then I give frozen daphnia to taste and so on and so on. That's real battle. A little pallet of spirulina. Oh, no way! That's really funny. Yeah, let go go for it. You can smell it. There's real drama going on in the tank. I dropped some Oh, those rocks. I hope Silver Dollars and old fishes won't find it, so it still will be something left for Black House. Yeah, yeah, over the corner. Turn left. Turn left. I will be honest with you. I have to admit that it is not always possible to resist the temptation to try a new product. But I have learned to follow the rule. Less is more. If you like certain product, you used it up. You can always buy more and there is no need to buy the maximum quantity you will not be able to use. All in all, it means a more variety diet, a happier and healthier fish. And now it's time for puffers. As you know, puffers, they don't eat dry fruit. They're quite small, about two centimeters long. It would be easy to overfeed them because they can eat one worm at a time. So you have wait until they eat first dose and after that you can put some more. But I have a lot of plecos over here. I believe it's already at least three generations of them. The one under the driftwood and the small one is over here. I believe it's the youngest one. This is first generation. They are breeding almost constantly. This is their dad. I was thinking even about removing him or, or mother to another tank because they, there will be no room for them soon. And these little fellas, they are just amazing. One of my favorite fish, puffers. Let's give them some more. And now, let's talk about the most mythic and common sin of all of us, which happened to be cause of many tank problems, and that is whew, 
overfeeding. Some say a hungry fish is a healthy fish. Nonsense. A hungry fish is not a strong fish and a weak fish is not resistant to various diseases and certainly cannot compete with other inhabitants of the tank. So it is really a myth. Of course, this does not mean that the fish cannot be left without food for several days. It is possible. I have left them for three or four days and nothing happened. Of course, it only applies to adult individuals. If you need an example, let's remember nature again and how things work over there. Food is not always available every day and overeating is an exception rather than the rule. And if we overfeed, of course it happens out of great love and good wishes. What happens then? Basically, we are talking about two consequences. First, uneaten food falls to the bottom and rots. The second, fish poo much more and this also affects the water quality. In both cases, too much organic waste is bad. You may break down your cycle by ammonium spikes and things like that. And at the best case, you will end up with algae growth, which you will have a long battle with. It does not really add motivation and inspiration to the hobby. So the answer is simple. Do not overfeed. Advice for those who want to understand how much to dose. All we know the two minute rule, but there is another good one. A fact. Fish stomach is about the size of its eye. That's all it can eat. Squeeze it to, almost to dust. It's their size food. I completely understand the desire to give some food every time you are passing by your tank. It's so nice to see the pets happy. And you know what? Don't stop yourself. But put very, very little, just one tiny pinch at a time if you cannot resist such a temptation. But feeding the fish once a day is really enough. And you know what? Fish like routine. It is called conditioned reflex. Great one. Feed them at the same time every day and you will see the difference. There will be almost no leftovers and believe me, everyone on both sides of the glass will be happy. And finally, the main rule. By the way, you already heard it today, but it's worth to repeat. Learn how fish feed in nature, what kind and amounts of food they consume what their diet might be in their natural environment. Nature provides all the answers. That's it for now. I invite you to leave your questions and insights in the comments below. I hope this full tank episode satisfied your expectations and added some knowledge. And if you like this content, please support the channel by liking and subscribing. Thanks for your attention and see you next time. Bye-bye.